Hello everyone, it's March. So we've got the next three. Now the flags, I loved that one when we did it. So I've, I've already sewn down a little band across here and put some things that can be the start of flags. I've pinned them off, cut them and pinned them already. <clears throat> we've got the, this is the folded bits of material with the edging, it's like a bit of a ruffle. And I decided I would bring them down off the edge a little bit. And the other thing is paper, pe paper piecing. Um, now, I know some people do not like bullion knots. I do not like paper piercing. Piercing, piecing, not piercing. Anyway, I thought I'd look at it and I saw that just because they're hexagonal doesn't mean that's the only way you can do it. So, um, great, got a knot in my thing. Don't want a knot there. So apparently you can do other shapes. But if you look anywhere else, you don't really find any other shape. So I guess it's traditional to do the hexagon. So bearing in mind that it doesn't always have to be a hexagon, I put this little hexagon on, I cut out, cut out the shape. I didn't even use paper. <laughs> I just cut out the shape and I put it on this bit of material. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll just do a circle. Maybe it should just be circular. So what I've got inside and I'll show you these the circle so I've got the shape of the circle sewn and sewn down you know the folds of a circle so all right these are Perfect Circles by Karen K. Buckley. Now, you'll probably, they'll be um, hard to find in some places, but I was lucky I could get some in Australia. And there's also the Larger Circles as well by the same person. Uh, I'm not sure where I've put mine. Somewhere, okay. Anyway, Karen K. Buckley, Perfect Circles. So these are the small ones. And, I, and I, I, first I thought maybe they'd made a mistake. I thought, have they done this wrong? Because um, I got four, there's four of each. But I'm thinking maybe that's correct. Because when I got the larger ones, um, there was still four of each. And maybe that's because, so they don't, you know, run out or whatever. Anyway, comes with a ring, so it's just a bit of a really, it's a good thick plastic so it's not going to run out or break easily. So that's what I've done for this bit. Now, the question is, with that knot that just somehow got there, go through, just get rid of that little extraneous loop there. No, that knot's going to be a bit of a pain. Okay, well, I'm going to cast it off then. And start the next bit. Yep. Definitely not doing what it's meant to do. Well, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, as they say. So, actually, it's good to do the paper piecing bit first and get it done because I don't know about anybody else but if I had to print out those little triangles was my least favorite part of the tags definitely and I made it harder for myself because I did do those little triangles I did tiny weeny ones so maybe it was my own fault perhaps <laughs> anyway is there a knot now, no, okay.
side, I thought. <clears throat> Just going to put it here. And this is going to be the only thing to do with paper piercing in this whole thing. Piercing, I always think it's piercing, it's piecing. P, what is it? PP. PP? <laughs> I don't know. Someone says that's what it's called. I, always, I just always thought when I was growing up, I just always thought it was patchwork, to be honest. Paper piecing. Pieces of paper. Very windy out there today. Got my dress blown up all over the place when I went to feed the little blind cat and his mate. The little blind cat is doing very well. It's on new food. Stopped vomiting. New dry food, new wet food and uh, new medication and uh, it's very good to see him bouncing back because he's a lovely little cat and very old very frail and and blind so i've fed him lucky i was wearing leggings anyway about the wind so because it's now autumn here in australia and melbourne is 50 seasons in one day yes that's 50 <laughs> We've got terrible winds today. Okay, so that's on. So I hope everyone is doing well. I went away again. I had another weekend away. If you, I don't know, uh, last, was it last week or the week before? Thread Thursday. Um, I had been away to sail to visit a friend and so shown a bit of footage of those beautiful exhibitions. So I'll have a Thread Thursday coming up again soon. Um, next week, probably, because today while I'm recording this is Thursday um, but I went to Creswick now Creswick, Creswick's near Ballarat and I had no idea about Creswick I didn't know it existed really and it turned out that there's all this historical knowledge there so the Lindsay family I'm looking for my Redder. The Lindsay family had five, four, four, four or five out of all the seven kids are, were illustrators and artists. So there's a famous um, book in Australia. Okay, so the story, the story's uh, The Magic Pudding, and it's a story I used to read to my children. So there was an art trail. So I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that when I went there. And... That was exciting to discover uh, that little delight. But the other delight was that I didn't know also that um, there was a big wool mill there and it was famous for its wool mills. And so I had a very good look through and I took a lot of footage and photos of all the different types of alpaca, wool and sheep wool and the combinations and so I'll do a thread Thursday and highlight all of that and we stayed in a little tiny house because we wanted to try out a tiny house why not and um so that was fun just one night we only went for we went for a, two days and a night but we came back pretty early on that second day because we both had stuff to do Anyway, it was quite exciting, and we went lots of uh, lots of river walks. 
a lot of rivers there. So it's quite an adventure actually. In the end, I came home so tired. I don't think I've ever done it as much walking as that. <laughs> Not in a long time. Not with my so had a what with my uh, injury, my plantar fasciitis, or however you say it. But I did all right. I did well. All right. So I'm doing these flags. Now I know when we did the flags for the um, tags challenge that we kind of had them loose. We didn't really have them. We had them on a thin string and they were loose, but I'm just not doing that now. I'm doing this a little bit more, a bit more secured this time. I'm thinking I'm going to embellish these somehow, but I just wanted to secure them down so I've not got any pins. Oh, it's like Burke Street here. Cat's outside the door being annoying. Of course, she was asleep until I started videoing, so I'll have a whinge about that because she always does it. She's been very naughty lately about that. Not a peep till I start videoing. So I'm not impressed. Just need to knee this up a little bit. Um, yep, might leave that sticking up. Because why not? Alright, so we've got no pins there now. That's a good, good sign. Actually, I won't cast it off. I'll just take the needle out for now. Now, I seem to remember these. So I've just got a bit of old, um, the tablecloth, the thicker tablecloth that I've been using for my backing for a few things. And I've just, I haven't ironed them, I've just kind of squashed them down like that. And I think I've got one, I've got four. I didn't go overboard because, um, this is a small piece. There she goes, scratching at the door. Gosh, I'm not very happy with her at the moment. Anyway, um, I think I'd like to use just this little fine off-white. Oh, and the other reason it's Burke Street. So Lily's started the second half of her uni degree. That's been, well, actually, that's been a bit of a long story. So short story long. Hang on, let me let that cat in. Otherwise, she'll make me a little bit upset. Okay, so short story long. She came back to Melbourne from Queensland, decided she was doing the wrong degree and that she thought she'd better um, do a degree she really wanted to do. Came back to Melbourne, had COVID lockdown. And as it got closer and she realised that there were issues with um, whether she would, so that students get, a, uh, if you're overseas, you might not get this, but all students get a a payment so they can study it's not a real lot anyway as it got closer she realized if she did half of this degree that the payments would run out halfway through so she was better off doing the degree finishing the degree she was already doing and then switching to the subject she wanted to do for her masters so that's what she decided to do. So she started and it's all online. And uh, she doesn't have, she uses her phone for internet, as many people do these days. And 
what's happening is is that the lectures and that are so, so laggy and slow that she's now said, oh, I've got to come to your house to listen to them. So she's effectively now doing her uni stuff at my house. There you go. Wasn't expecting that. Now, I can't remember. Did we do it the opposite way last time? Under. I can't remember. Well, I'm just going to put it... I'll fray them after, I think. Put it here. Just a little bit above, so as I've got a bit of a space here. Yes, yeah, so I didn't have any pet sitting for a while, but everyone's hit that point again where they were ready to go. <laughs> ready to go away. Just people having a weekend here and a weekend there. So this lady with the blind cat has gone to Tasmania to do some camping and hiking. She does lots of long hikes. And so she's booked me for three, three sittings. So she's going away again in a few weeks and again after that. She gets away a bit, that's good. Oh, lucky. So I'm glad I kind of glad I fitted in a little one or two days away. And then I just picked up a key for Gary, the cat that you've got to be careful he doesn't bite you. He's looking very happy. You've given him a lovely pat and then all of a sudden he might turn on you, give you a little nip. He's never he's not too bad. Anyway, he loves me. Comes and rubs himself around my legs and the owner thinks that's the best thing ever. <laughs> so that's good. And then I think, uh, I think it's this weekend, I start the bunnies again. Two little gorgeous bunnies to feed them. Watch them nibbling at their grass. <laughs> Cute. And then I also visited someone who has a little dog and a little cat and they're going away for two nights so I'm minding them and their little doggie's called Thumper. It's a little, um, I think it's a Chihuahua, the one with the little, very tiny with the curly tail. Not a Pomeranian, short-haired Chihuahua. Little yappy but um, he's so funny. It's just a right character. So anyway, it's only two days, so that's all right to miss out on two nights worth of sleep because dogs can be a bit naughty in the night if they want to play or whatever, or they if it's a new person. Anyway. And one of my other ones have booked me again. The hissy cat. <laughs> I call it the hissy cat. <laughs> So it's good, it's good. That's my little sideline. It doesn't take a lot of time and I do it in the morning and I do it in the evening. And that's quite good. All right. Last one, like I say, I'm only gonna do four, four of these. I know, so it's funny doing these because we have to, um, it's like we, we're reminded and we, we go back in our mind about how did I do that last time again? And I remember, I think, that Dan was saying we had to put these as close together as possible for the effect. So now instead of uh, being creative writing, writing being the topic of discussion, which it was going to be with Lily doing uni, 
It is now back to sociology, so the history of witches, uh, anything to do with um, social issues, modern world. She's doing history, so she has um, a history component to it. Modern issues of sociology in the world, tribes, etc. What else? Things to do with um, how society structures itself. She also does a slant on feminism, so I guess I'm going to be hearing about that for the next year and a half. <laughs> like I haven't been hearing it with two daughters who are millennials all of their life. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, I'm going to fray these a little bit. Not at the top, I don't want to fray them at the top really. More sides. So I made today um, a mushroom korma, so an Indian korma, uh, but mushrooms rather than meat that's what I had I decided I might I watched someone who, do, who who's been doing a pantry challenge where you try not to buy anything from the shop and you try to use up what you've got and uh, I, obviously for her that's not as hard as it would be for me because she has her own acre of vegetables outside <laughs> she actually went for two months can you believe it I thought that was marvelous quite astonished that she could do that. I couldn't. I don't think I could. I mean, you know, I do have stuff in the freezer, but I generally try to, I generally want to go up and just buy um, stuff every two days, you know, like fresh, fresh vegetables every two or three days rather than storing anything. But um, because she has a farm, she mass makes things and freezes stuff so she made she already had stuff like lasagnas and stuff like that but she had lots of um, storage for pasta and spaghetti and stuff so they grew their own tomatoes and so they already had lots of tomato um, paste ready to go for lasagnas and spaghettis and well you know if you've got lots of flour you can always bake a cake if you've got leftover bananas and stuff like that, banana cake, carrot cake. So she did pretty well, I thought, for two months. I definitely don't think I could do two months, not without the fresh produce, honestly. I really think that would be hard. If you were allowed to go and buy only fruit and vegetables, I could probably do it without buying anything else. Just use everything in the pantry. What do you reckon? Do you think you could do it? Let me know. Maybe some of you have tried it. All right, this one's already a bit of a fluffy one. There we go. That was one of my favourites. Um, not because I, I hadn't done it before, but just I loved the, the fluffy doing that. Okay, let's look at what we've got. We've got the fluffy, we've got the paper piecing, and we've got the flags that I want to embellish. Um, but left my other big tin with the buttons downstairs. Oh, here they are. All right, so here's the large circles and I decided that because it's really handy that these ones are on here that I might put a hole in each of these and put them on a ring too and what I was looking at was I've got these two hole punches Let's get a bit of paper. this is a really little one 
and I was thinking maybe that's too small. And this one is a slightly bigger one, and I was thinking maybe that's too big. And I'm not sure if it'll get through there. Probably need to use my crocodile, which I was looking for. You know, that's what happens. I organised everything, and now I don't know where I put stuff. I think my crocodile's downstairs. That's one of my little jobs. That'll keep them all good. Anyway, they're the last, bigger perfect circles. Maybe I don't have any, I think the smallest buttons in this one. That would work. That's nice. What about a flower? Too big. I like the colour though. What's this little one? Don't know if you can hear Lily. Lily was over COVID um, four weeks ago. She's still coughing. It's terrible. It's really lingering for her. All right, let's see. No. This looks better down there, I think. I don't mind that there. And what about this? Okay. Oh, right, I think the sweet potato's cooked in the oven, so I will be back. Okay, I'm back and I've found my crocodile. Now this is the smaller side of the crocodile. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the size I wanted. Now the question is, will it go in? All right, so, better set this little thing. Set that tight. I think that's about where I want it to go in. I don't want it too near the edge, but I don't want it too far in. So, all right, here goes. Ah. How good is the crocodile? So that means I can do all of these like that. Flying everywhere. And then they'll be able to be put on a ring. I don't know if I'm not, I don't think I'll put them on. Or well, maybe I will. That's just one giant ring. I don't know. I'll see. Anyway, I'll do them off camera. But I just thought I'd show you how I was getting around that particular issue. Uh, right, we finished these. Got our paper pee piecing. Oh, I still can't get it right, even a day later. That done. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So it's that's not a hexagon, which has five sides. It's a six-sided, whatever that is. I don't know. Um, yes, and my flags in the end. In the end, I was playing around last night and got carried away and finished them off camera. So that's them. I've got a, the little rose. I've got some pointy end. I might, I might do a little bit more on... Actually, while I'm here, <laughs> a day later... I can see a few things I wouldn't mind doing. So I just want to, I think I just want to have a, just a little straight, straight stitch all around to join those two together.
was it? I've had a lovely night, evening just, wasn't much of an evening actually, it was a bit of an evening doing some embroidery while Lily was doing her, listening to her lecture online that she couldn't listen to because of the internet at her house. And then I just got so tired I went to bed at 8.30. It was ridiculous. And then, of course, I woke at three this morning, as you do. Wide awake. Still awake. So I just started my day, really. <laughs> oh, that's what you got to do there. That's what you got to do. So I know that I started my piece, so I'm just having a view of the whole thing. Started it with... Um, Looking at trying to keep it all neutrals, even though the background was that khaki green colour. And obviously, as soon as I put these little flowers on with the orange and the yellow, and then I use the orange, it's like every week it gets wayward. It makes its own mind up about what it's doing. <laughs> just grows and morphs that's what it's doing it's morphing that's the creative process though isn't it so I've tried to still keep with neutrals for a you know a lot of it these are still neutral but every time I add an embellishment it's like that's the color so maybe that's that that's the rule I don't know does there have to be a rule there doesn't just adding something every month the process is quite interesting um, because we still have the view and we still have the overview of the whole thing, but any preconceived ideas we have just change. They just change it. So now I've added sparklies, buttons, flowers, silk, silk rose, a dark blue. I think that should probably be the only dark blue in the whole thing, or... Well, look, honestly, I cannot even say that, can I? So I've got sequins, beads, and they're all shiny and sparkly. And, yeah, it got out of control with the colours. So there you go. Anyway, that's my March um, tag roulette. And it's fun, fun watching it grow. Let's see what happens next month. Anyway, oh, I've waffled enough and I uh, hope you enjoyed what, well, at least the sewing, if not the waffling. And I'll see you uh, in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.